We all know and probably love social media. The ability to just pick up your phone and see what your friends, favorite celebrities, and all types of random users are doing. It's just an endless stream of fun and entertainment that you can't keep your eyes off for more than a minute. What's the issue with that? Well, a team of researchers at Psychiatrist.com reported in a study of problematic social media use that people who suffer from problematic social media use are at an increased risk to develop symptoms of ADHD, such as inattention. So, our goal in this presentation is to bring awareness to the issue and maybe provide some steps for you to prevent it. So, for checking, what do you think your guys' average amount of time spent on your phone is? I'm gonna say 10 hours. I'm gonna say 14 hours. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say like nine hours. Nine hours, all right, do you mind pulling it up and checking? Everyone show the camera. All right. We got seven hours, four and a half hours, and six hours. That's so high. now that you've checked, what makes you guys think that it was going to be so high? I, I just sit in my bed when I'm home. Whenever I'm home, I'm on my phone, like no matter what. I'm just like kind of always on my phone. I have my phone around me, so I felt like it was going to be longer. Yeah, me too. I'm just like, whenever I have downtime, I'm usually on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's it. Thank you. I think that we could all use a quick break from the rapid fire bright videos we all see. The time that you are spending on your phone mindlessly scrolling through 10 second reels or TikToks can be spent reading something informational, indulging in some sort of physical activity, or working on a pa passion project that's hands on. Added to this, the fact that teenagers are also mostly aware of this already leads to the issue of sim simply realizing that you're spending too much time, often relying on morals and the strength to put down your phone. People now are forgetting what's around them and the sights that they could see from simply taking a brisk walk outside and taking in nature. So, what do you think the average amount of time high schoolers spend on their phone per day is? I'm gonna say 420 minutes, seven hours. Pretty close. The average amount of time spent is six and a half hours. So uh, you were a little bit over. Yeah. But within that six and a half hours, what do you think high schoolers could be doing? Sleeping. Mm -hmm. For sure. I agree with that. <laughs> uh, my name is Finn McFadden, and I'm in. I'm a junior. I'm in 11th grade. Currently, have you ever found yourself like sucked into technology too much or spending too much time? I say yeah, occasionally. I think like you know sometimes you just you don't really want to do work or something. You're just bored, tired. You'll just be laying in bed and you just grab your phone, and the next thing you know, it's two hours later, and you were just watching random YouTube videos. You know, just doing all that stuff. So. I think, yeah, occasionally, but I think I've gotten pretty good with it. But I know there are definitely a lot of students at this school, at our middle school, like, you know, young kids especially, are, aren't as good as I am with it. They're getting sucked in, they're doing things, they're watching too much stuff and letting other things fall to the wayside. So, if teenagers and parents alike recognize that social media is an issue, then why are we as a society not doing anything against it? Think about this. You would never take an eight-year-old to see an R-rated horror movie. Yet, you'll give an eight-year-old unsupervised internet access where they can be subjected to and find equally mature content quicker and easier than they ever would anywhere else. Hi, I'm here with counselor Mrs. Aldifer. And in your experience, do you ever see social media play uh, a negative role in teams' lives? Yeah, absolutely. I think students who spend a lot of time on social media um, it negatively impacts their social interaction with other students. Um, sometimes they experience um, bullying or sometimes they get um, sucked into um, you know, just one thing after another and then they have trouble um, disconnecting from their social media. Mm -hmm. And do you have any other solutions that could be possible to kind of either, you know, not have as many negative effects or to kind of almost like get rid of the problem? Um, I don't know that anything's going to get rid of the problem. I think it's learning how to adjust. Um, and I think in the end, it's about having a good balance. Anyone who does anything too much mm -hmm. is not good for you. So setting some kind of limits in terms of how many hours a day or how many times students interact or kids interact with social media or even their phone in general is going to help limit um, the impact that the negative impact that social media has or screen time in general. Yeah, very good. So the Reliance turns to the parents who do have the power to control their young children's online presence, although safely. 
Apps like YouTube have safe and official alternatives like YouTube TV and kids, which allow you to create profiles for your child to remove harmful content from appearing. Likewise, many apps have features similar to that of YouTube and are easily accessible for parents. But it isn't just the content that should be managed, as the screen time is important too. Allow your children to have social media and be out there in the online world, but don't let it be their only world. Limit the amount of time that they have on their phones in order to prevent screen addictions and possible mental issues from developing. We lined up a few questions with Dylan Selterman, who is a worker at Psychology Today. And the first question we asked him was, in your article, you talked about the motives one needs to be more positively or negatively affected by social media. What are the more long-term effects of these motives in social media? To which he replied, it's a good question that hasn't been addressed yet. I would love to see studies that examine how positive or negative motivations for social media use may have long-term outcomes. My thinking is that these, those correlations would probably be low, since social media use in the short term tends to be very low stakes. Motivations for bigger things like attending college or medical school will have more long-term outcomes. Motivations for looking at social media for 30 minutes may not have strong correlations with long-term outcomes. And our second question was, what is your hypothetical minimum age for using social media, and what leads you to make that choice? And he responded, it depends what you mean by social media. He said, my daughter watches YouTube videos now. She's six years old. But some people don't think that YouTube is a social media platform, and they think more of Instagram and TikTok, which we agree on. He says, my point is that it depends on the content. All my daughter watches are cartoons that are similar to ones on TV like Bluey and Cosmic Kids Yoga. I think that stuff is pretty harmless. And if she was to watch animal slash nature videos, music, or sports clips on Instagram and TikTok, I think that's fine too. He says, I think what you're asking is a slightly different question, which is what age people should be allowed to create their own social media profiles and interact with others online without parental supervision. This is a tricky question because it kind of is asking what the age of majority should be. My working assumption is that we should we should monitor the age at which people develop formal operational reasoning, which is about 12 to 13 years old. But he says that he could be pers persuaded on that number. So our last question, we kind of wanted to get a solution from him. So we said, what do you propose for these people who feel pressure and are possibly drained from social media? And to that, he responded, if you're not enjoying social media, 